Challenge runs have exploded in popularity over the last several years here on YouTube. Between Nuzlocks, solo runs, and all the other categories that have popped up over time, players are constantly challenging themselves with harder ways to play through the game. Because, let's face it, for a lot of us, Pokemon has become pretty easy. Amongst all these challenge runs, there's one that, like a middle child, often gets forgotten about, and that's the monotype run. It's not too surprising why monotype runs are neglected so often, as they're the easiest of the bunch. No worries about permanent death, and you can have more than one Pokemon on your team, so it really isn't much more difficult than a regular playthrough. That being said, there's still a popular and entertaining way to play through the Pokemon games. I want to give monotype runs some needed love and attention by asking the question, what's the best type for a monotype run in each main series game? I've done the research, and I gotta say, there are a few that are quite surprising. Before we begin, be sure to drop a like down below and leave a comment letting me know what your favorite type is. So before I can get into the list, there are a couple quick ground rules I need to lay out. For one, I'm only going through the initial releases for each gen. So no emerald or platinum, and no remakes. I can do this in the future if y'all want, but for now, let's leave it simple. Next, for a type to be considered for a particular game, you have to obtain at least one Pokémon of that type before beating the first gym. This feels like an appropriate cutoff, as getting through multiple badges without starting the run kind of defeats the purpose. Another important detail is that each Pokémon has their final stage considered when team building. So for example, if I chose Flying type for Red and Blue, this would allow us to use Charmander throughout the game, as we'll eventually get Charizard. In turn, I think it's fair to say you must evolve that Pokémon as soon as possible. To be honest, this won't really come up on the list, but it was an important consideration of mine while putting this together. And for the last thing, be sure to subscribe if you enjoy. My dog gets one pet for every subscriber, and he's a needy boy. So help him out, we both appreciate it. Where else to start off with than Generation 1's Red and Blue? Unfortunately, the undisputed best type in the game, the Psychic type, is unavailable based on our rule set. The first obtainable is Abra, who isn't available until after Mount Moon. So if we can't choose the best type, then what do we go with? Well, as surprising as it may sound, I think the best type for Red and Blue is the Poison type. For one, choosing the Poison type allows us to use Bulbasaur, who is easily the best starter for getting through the beginning of the game. Not to mention Venusaur can hold its own against several important trainers in the late game. But what really makes the Poison type amazing is the undisputed king of Gen 1 speedrunning, Nidoking. Nidoran is on the second route available, you get the Moonstone super early on, and the rest is history. There's a reason that over years of speedrunning Red and Blue, Nidoking is still the go-to. But even with that said, there are still a ton of good Poison types throughout the game. Tenacruel, Gengar, Weezing, Victory Bell, Muck, hell, even Beedrill is good in the beginning. And in terms of opposing trainers, Poison types don't have a ton of obstacles. Your biggest hurdle is Sabrina, which, yes, can be difficult. But you can just wait to battle her until you're high enough level, or just hope you outspeed in one shot which isn't that hard of a task given the frail defense of her Pokémon. Otherwise, there's just Giovanni, who is easy to handle with several Pokémon available to you. But the craziest part comes in the Elite Four. If you didn't already know, both Lorelei's Dugong and Lance's Dragon Pokémon are coded to where they'll only use Rest and Agility against Poison types, because Psychic moves are good against Poison types. And that's Glitchy Gen 1 for you. So you're able to breeze through some of the toughest Pokémon in the game off typing alone. The only other hurdle is the occasional Alakazam from your rival in the late game, but that's just one Pokémon to get through. Overall, Poison types just have a ton of benefits with very few downsides at Red and Blue, which is funny considering that they're only super effective against Grass. And I think Bug type. You know, Gen 1. It's weird and all. As a runner-up, I wanted to give mention to the Water type. Blastoise is the best starter to solo the game with, and between Pokémon like Starmie, Slowbro, Lapras, and Gyarados, just to name a few, there's enough powerhouses to make a playthrough a breeze. Especially since there isn't a single Grass or Electric type amongst the Elite Four. The only difficulties for the Water type are Surge and Erika, who really aren't that tough, and Lorelei, who doesn't do much damage to you either. So the Water type overall is in a pretty solid position as well, just not as good as the Poison type. Next up, we have the Generation 2 games, Gold and Silver. These games are a bit more limiting than Generation 1 was. Not only are none of the starters dual type, but there isn't a ton of type diversity between the beginning and the first gym, which limits us even more so. 
However, with that being said, I think the best monotype option for these games is the ground type. While this does require us to chuck our starter straight into the box, we can obtain both Geodude and the traded Onyx, Rocky, before the first gym, which is a breeze with these two. And throughout the game, we're able to use some pretty decent picks like Quagsire, Piloswine, Gligar, and, like in Gen 1, the Nidoran line. Even without these additions though, Geodude and Onyx can go pretty far on their own. They're super effective against Bugsy, resist attacks from Whitney's mill tank, and are super effective against Morty's team. So off the bat, you're at an advantage against half the gym leaders with only a few rocks on your team. In addition to this, ground types are great against Team Rocket, as the leaders use a lot of poison types. In the Elite Four, there's no one trainer you're at a disadvantage against, meanwhile you have several decent matchups across each team. The only poor matchups throughout the game are against Price, who's a pushover, and Claire's Kingdra. So for basically the whole game, you're just cruising. To be fair, Gold and Silver are really easy games, but ground types get to reap these rewards better than any other type in my opinion. Quick shout out to the grass types for having an awful matchup throughout basically the entire game. My runner up for gold and silver is probably the normal type. While you're at a disadvantage against Chuck and Bruno, that's where the negatives end. There's a ton of options for normal types in gold and silver, especially early on, and as normal types, a lot of them have really good coverage through TMs, especially with the elemental punches being available so early. That being said, normal is hard to tout as one of the best, as you're seldom going to have an advantage. So while a solid option, normal only gets the silver medal, as the ground type breezes through gold with a gold. Let's move along to the third gen games, Ruby and Sapphire. Of everything on the list, this one should be the most obvious. What, are you surprised? One word, Swampert. As we all know, Swampert is incredible at getting through these games. Not only does it have great stats and moves, but it's the coveted water ground type, only being weak to grass. And in a crazy decision by Game Freak, there's no grass gym in Gen 3. So Swampert's biggest hurdle is something it doesn't even have to clear. But even if you do run into the occasional grass type, there's still a ton of water options available in the game. Between Pelipper, Ludicolo, and Gyarados, grass types will cease to be an issue for the most part. And what's great is that you can get these three pretty early, or at least their pre-evolutions. Plus, between Azumarill, Sharpedo, Tentacruel, Milotic, Walrein, and Wishcash, you have plenty of amazing team options to help round out your roster. And among the gym leaders, Elite Four, Team Aqua, and Team Magma, there's no trainer you're really going to struggle against. I wish I had more to say, but at the same time, does anybody need more info on why the game with a ton of water is a great game to do a monotype water run? Yeah, I didn't think so. As an honorable mention, I'd like to bring up the normal type again. Just like in Gen 2, there are a ton of normal types throughout the start of the game, including some heavy hitters like Swellow and Slacking, once you get them there. Plus, throughout the rest of the game, there are plenty of great additions like Zangoose, Dodrio, and Giraffe Rig, amongst many others. Plus, again, many normal types get a wide variety of coverage through TMs. That being said, the beginning of the game is where you'll end up struggling the most with them. There's no great option for the rock type gym, and then right after that you're up against Brawly. Thankfully, between using Talo or just skipping Brawly altogether, you have a few ways to combat this. Afterwards, pretty smooth sailing against gyms in the Elite Four. Although again, no particular advantages. Normal is a decent option for Gen 3, but there's no getting over the wall that is the water type. Next up is the subscribe button. Oh brother, this guy stinks! Okay, really next up we have Generation 4. Diamond and Pearl. After careful consideration, I believe the best type to choose is the fighting type. Off the bat, the biggest downside for fighting types in these games is the limited options available. It's not quite as bad as the fire type, but it's still a bit lacking. But with that said, let me tell you what you do get. Infernape, Metacham, Gallade, Heracross, Toxicroak, and Lucario. Oh, and I guess Machamp if you can evolve him into that. So yeah, pretty stacked. While you're limited to Chimchar and Machop before the first gym, Chimchar alone can get you through the start of the game. Rorik is easy once you evolve, and Gardenia is a pushover. Even Commander Mars is an easy one since you can hit Perugly for super effective damage. But even after the early game stages, you won't be facing much opposition. 
In fact, overall, half the gyms are basically free with this team. And of the ones remaining, Fantina's the only one you can't just spam fighting attacks against. But even then, she isn't that difficult. And against the Elite Four, Lucian is the only trainer who will give you some trouble, but between Metacham, Gallade, and Lucario all being neutral to Psychic, it's not as worrisome of a battle as you might think. Especially because the fighting types in these games are great at hitting for massive damage. And as for Cynthia, well, you don't have a bad matchup, but it isn't a favorable one either. To be fair, Cynthia's team is so threatening that any monotype team would be facing at least some difficulty. So overall, fighting types, while not having a lot of variety, have a great setup in Gen 4. There's only one type that I think rivals fighting types in these games, and it's the ground type. Like with Chimchar, the ground type allows us to keep Turtwig and eventually Torterra. While not regarded as the best starter in the game, Torterra definitely carries its weight. Also side note, Torterra is 7 foot 3 and only weighs 680 pounds. I don't know about you, but that feels absurdly low. Torterra just barely qualifies for my 600 pound life, and that makes me feel weird. Anyways, in addition to Torterra, you also get the chance to use Pokemon like Gastrodon, Garchomp, Hippowdon, Gliscor, and Mamoswine, some of the best competitive Pokemon introduced in these games. The biggest downside to picking the ground type is the Ice Gym, especially since several of your best team options are four times weak. In addition to this, Gardenia pretty much needs to be soloed by Grottle, as your only other potential team members by this point are Shellos and, like, Geodude. This isn't impossible, but it's definitely not as easy as blazing through with Monferno. It was those couple hurdles that convinced me to put fighting type over ground, but they're pretty minor at that. Ground still has a ton going for it, especially with no big disadvantages in the Elite Four. What do you think is better for Diamond and Pearl? Fighting or ground? Let me know in the comments. Alrighty, now we're on to Generation 5's Black and White. Out of all the main series games, these two are by far the most limited based on my starting before the first gym rule. The only options we have are Grass, Water, Fire, Fighting, Normal, and Dark. The beginning is rough no matter what, with only the Normal type having more than one Pokemon available. But let's be honest, Patrat is dead weight anyways. That being said, my choice, yet again, has to be the fighting type. Like I said, the beginning is going to be rough, but Tepic can do well enough at brute forcing its way through gym number one. And once you've done that, you're in a really good position. Before facing the second gym, you can get Sock and Throw, as well as Timber. All solid choices, especially with the second gym being normal type. Then we have the third gym leader, Berg, who is easy to beat with what should now be Pignite. And once you leave Castelia City, you're able to get probably the best Pokemon you can for the rest of this run, Scrafty. If you've played through Gen 5, then you know how amazing Scrafty is. Great stats all around, solid moves, some helpful abilities, and most importantly, a favorable matchup versus three of the Elite Four. In some ways, I even think Scrafty is better in Gen 5 than Nidoking is in Gen 1. You know, if you ignore all the glitchiness that is Gen 1. But the benefits for the fighting type don't end there. Most would agree that the hardest fights in Black and White are against N and Getsis at the end of the game. Well, it turns out that between the two, 7 of their 12 Pokemon are weak to fighting, so you really couldn't ask for more from a single type versus the final bosses. There are several difficult fights for fighting types between Elisa and Skyla, but overall the pros far outweigh the cons for this type. And hey, if you really wanted to, you could always catch the legendary trio of Cobalion, Verizion, and Terrakion, since hey! They're all fighting types. In terms of an honorable mention, I wanted to bring up the dark type first. The Generation 5 dark types are incredibly good and is a huge reason why I gave Scrappy as much praise as I did. I would love to recommend the dark type for these games, but the huge flaw with it is that you're stuck with Purloin slash Lyopard for the first three gyms. Even with all the amazing late game dark types available, I can in good conscience recommend this Pokemon for three out of eight gyms. So, if I was to pick a runner-up, it would have to be the water type. Oshawott is a good boy, I, I mean a pretty decent starter pick, and Samurott can hold its own in the late game, especially with the coverage it gets. And with the water type, you get some good choices for team members. Keyword, some. You don't have any crazy advantages throughout the game, but at the same time, there's not many disadvantages. 
The electric gym is the most glaring hurdle, but by that point you should have Palpitoad, which would make things a bit easier. So yeah, just kind of a neutral slate most of the way through for water types. Which isn't a bad thing for a monotype playthrough, but why be in a neutral position when you can be in a favorable one with the fighting type? Okay, we're just over halfway through the main series games, and I think this is a good spot to take a pause. Generations 6 through 9 greatly expanded the options available to the player before the first gym, and because of that, there's a lot more for me to consider when deciding on the best monotype. So I'm going to take some extra time and really go in depth on these games to give you the best, most well-rounded answer I can. And between gens 8 and 9 alone, I'm going to need to do a lot of research. Seriously though, at the time of writing this script, I have no idea how I'm going to handle Scarlet and Violet. But that's a matter for another day. For now, thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe and ring the notification bell so you know when I upload. I really appreciate all the support thus far, and I have plenty more videos in the works for you guys. But for now, as thanks for making it to the end of the video, here's a picture of my dog. Talk to y'all soon.